I firmly believe that one of the reasons Astro has done so well is because it says bring your React, bring your view, bring your Svelte, and just hydrate it when you're ready. Well, now it's added support for use action state with React and connected all this up with Astro's actions. I wanna show you today how to connect Astro actions and React use action state. You ready? Let's go. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Use action state has transformed the way I interact with form data inside of React. You pass it some kind of action function and it's your initial state. Usually those are the only two I use. And then you get back the current state, whatever it happens to be form action for mutating the state. And then you even get back a nice is pending Boolean so you can update your UI based on whether or not that form is currently submitting. Now, as of last week, Astro now supports all of this inside of its own action handler. So that's what I wanna talk about in this video. Astro has actions. Here you can just define an action. You get nice typing with Zod. You can accept form data or JSON data and then return back out of that some kind of handler. Now this handler can process the data. It can add it to your database, all this kind of stuff. This is using Astro's APIs, but now with this nice integration, you can use all the best stuff in React and all the best stuff in Astro. Now, this is all done by using this use action state. With state is another little helper you get out of this as well. So all this is what we're gonna look at today. Now, I started with just kind of this existing blog template. This is the basic blog template and added a few very basic things. But the first thing I wanna do is add React. So we'll definitely need that. I'm using NPM, so I'll do NPX, Astro add, we're gonna add React. Now, what this does is allow you to interact with React inside of Astro. These are called Astro Islands. It can basically generate all the HTML you need and then simply hydrate it with a React when you need it. So let's npm run dev to get this thing back up and running. And let's start by creating a nice little like counter. So first of all, we're gonna export a function. We'll call this a like. And this thing is going to take two items. It's gonna take a post ID and it'll also take a number of likes. We can call this like num of likes. And why don't we make that just a little bit bigger? All right, now since I'm in TypeScript, I'll go ahead and type this post ID will be a string. And then the num of likes, this is gonna be a number. So in a moment, we'll hook all this up to our action, but for now, let's just return a basic form with a button. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and get this into our blog post. So if I jump over to our blog, we select any of these, I should be able to just add it to the top of that post. Now we're gonna come inside here and in the base like template they give you here, you can just add it above the content here. So let's add a like, just like that. And remember this takes two items, it takes the post ID, and this will be equal to our post.id because this is what we're getting in this individual route here. And then we'll also have the number of likes and let's just set it to zero for now. So as soon as I add that, you'll notice it shows up right over here and now all this shows. Now I'm gonna be passing down these number of likes. So let's go ahead and show that here as well. For now, we can just set it at number of likes. Eventually we want this to be live state, but now you can see it shows up over here. And if I were to change this to, I don't know, two or something like that, then it shows up there. Now in order for this React to actually be hydrated, right now it's just being rendered by Astro as static HTML. I need to add some kind of client directive. So I'll probably do client load so it's ready as soon as possible. Now, whenever I click this, it should be interactive as well with, now whenever I click this, it should be interactive as well uh, with React. Okay, cool. So let's come back over here. And now what I wanna do is I wanna add an action to this. I've already scaffolded out a base of an action right over here. So if you look over here, we've got this nice like action where we accept form input we check to make sure that we have a string ID and then we can do some kind of thing in the handler right here. So at a starting point, I wanna go ahead and destructure here the post ID. And then we also get the context, which we're going to need here in a second. So just to make sure this is actually working, let's console log the post ID just to make sure that we can actually get this inside of here. Now it's time to hook this up using that new helper we get with Astro. So instead of merely hard coding this right here, whatever I pass in, I wanna have some local state here. Now, if I was using like a normal use state hook, I could do it right here. But remember, we get this nice helper called use action state. This comes from React itself. So this feels very native because, well, it is very native. Now, here's where the new Astro helper comes in. It's called with state. And this essentially allows us to wrap the action and pass that along. And then it will handle everything we need inside of here. We're going to use actions like this from Astro actions. And we'll just pass it the like action. So that's the first thing I need to do is to pass that action. The second thing I need to do is to pass an initial state. For this one, because I'm gonna get back both data and error, I wanna structure my initial state the same way. So my data will just be my number of likes, and then my error will be undefined. All right, finally up here, we're gonna get back a few things from this hook. One of them will be the existing state, so the current state at that moment. So whatever it does, it'll always just keep this up to date, and this is what we'll actually pass in down below. We're also gonna get back an action, and then finally we'll get back a pending Boolean here, which will tell us whether or not the form is currently being submitted. 
So we can update everything down here. Instead of having number of likes here, we're gonna just use the state variable we get back because this will actually update as we go. And now here off this, we need to pick off the data, which will be the number of likes we get back. Now right now, this is gonna yell at us because the action we passed in doesn't pass back data that looks like this. It will in a second. So we'll handle that when we get there. Right now, I just wanna make sure that this is actually working. So I need to actually hook up the action to this form. And I can use the form action here. And let's go ahead and pass it the action that we get back from our use action state hook. Now finally, we wanna use this pending variable to disable this button. So I'll do disabled and we'll just set this to pending. My personal preference is to name this is pending. You can do whatever you want. You can name it whatever you want when you destructure it here, but that just reminds me that it's a Boolean. Okay, so now I've got all this stuff hooked up. Whenever I'm submitting this now, it won't let me duplicate it until I get something back here for my action. Okay, so let's go ahead and click here and this should give us something back. It gives us success, all right? Now, that gave us back success because that's what we returned here, but I wanna make sure that we've actually console logged this as well. And if I come down here, yep, we've actually console logged the ID. So I know I'm getting it through at this point. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and return what I expect from here. Now in the handler, there's a second helper I get. One we got on the front end. Now this one we get in the on the back end. And this also comes from the AstroJS actions package. So eventually we're gonna destructure the data and the error here, but this comes from a wait and we're looking at get action state. Again, this comes from AstroJS. Now it does need to know the context here and we can actually use a nice generic here called safe result. This comes from Astro Actions. And in here, we just need to pass it two things. We're gonna first of all pass it the error and then we'll pass it number because the number is what we're gonna be like passing in here as our data. So here we're gonna destructure two things, our current likes and then secondly, our error. All right, so right now ignore all these error messages. All it's doing is saying, hey, you haven't used these things yet, which, which we will. But what we're doing is we're assigning the data a kind of variable inside of this action. The variable is called current likes and we just wanna iterate off of that. We're saying by default, it's going to be equal to zero. And we should get out of here two things, the data and the error. So just below here, the first thing I wanna do is handle any errors. So let's handle uh, errors. Here we'll say if error, then we're just going to throw an error. And you could actually throw an astro action error if you want to, but I won't get into that. I've done a video on that in the past. Secondly, what we wanna do is we wanna to write to the database. So we're gonna to write to the DB where we update that actual state. Now, if I look into the config for the DB, you'll see that we have a column called likes where we've got a post ID. This is the primary key. And then we've got a number of likes that defaults to zero. Astro DB, which is this interface for interacting with the DB uses drizzle under the hood. So I'm just gonna import DB here we're going to insert into the likes table. We want to pass it some values. Now the values are just going to be the post ID and the likes. Now the likes by default will just be the current likes, right? Whatever it happens to be plus one. So the post ID will be passed to us by the form and we're just going to increment on our current likes, which should start at zero. Now there is the situation obviously where we may already have something in the database. So we get a nice helper from Drizzle called on conflict do update. And what we wanna do is just update the value if there is a conflict. So in other words, if we already have something in our database that has that key of the, the post ID, so we're gonna set the target here to likes dot, and then we have post ID. So that's the target we're looking at. And then we wanna set the value of likes. So we'll set likes to current likes plus one. So if it already exists, increment it. If it doesn't exist, then we can go ahead and just add one to zero, right? Now, when all this is done, we're not gonna return success. We wanna actually return whatever that was, current likes uh, plus one. Now this variable right here is being tracked by the actual action state. And that's what I'm returning down here as well. Now, anytime I come over here, I should be able to increment this and it should actually update the database. So I'll click here and of course I see it in the UI, I would expect that, um, but I'm actually getting this back from here. So I know it's actually working, but let's just double check by coming over this way and let's look at dot astro. And I can look actually at the, the content.db. It's running this locally here. And you can see I've got one and four. Now this one comes from the seed data I gave it originally. The four relates to here. Now when I refresh, it's gonna go back to zero. Why is that? Well, I'm not actually using the real state, right? You might remember that I actually passed it in the slug, just zero. So the last thing I need to do is actually pull this down. When I hit this page, I wanna grab the stuff from the database and show it live here. Now I wanna stay focused on React and not overcomplicate this with extra things from Astro, but you might see here that this is a static route, which means this will just be built once at build time. So anything I do here in the server side stuff will just be interactive with at build. So ultimately, if I really want this to be live, I would need to do this somewhere in like an API route that I hit here. Of course, the other scenario is I could change this to a server side route instead. 
Now, currently I don't have it set up that way, so I would need to actually change this route. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna come over here, MPX, Astro Add. Let's just add the Vercel adapter. So it should update everything for me. We'll get this back up and running with NPM run dev. And this enables me now on any given route to set that route for a server-side rendering. So we can do that if I come up top here. I can use the pre-render and just set this equal to false. So I do not want this thing to pre-render. Now this breaks this whole route because right now I have it doing static paths. So let me switch this over and I'll talk through it briefly. All right, so that actually simplifies it a good bit. All we do is pick off the slug because this is gonna be done at server side, right? So it'll all be happen when the page loads. If it doesn't exist, we return a 404. Then we just get the entry from our content collection. Again, this is done live. If it doesn't exist, again, we return a 404. And then we just pick off the post like we'd expect. We grab the content, drop it right in here. Now, the nice thing here is now we can just grab the items from the database on this fetch as well, right? As soon as we hit the page, we can go ahead and grab the database. This is all done server side because it's in this front matter section. So here, let's simply await db.select. We're going to grab from the likes table. And then we have a little conditional here, right? We're going to say where I want to just grab EQ, which again comes from Astro DB. We want to compare two things. We're first of all going to compare the likes dot post ID. And then secondly, we're going to look at the post dot ID. So whatever the post ID is, we're going to say, are there any likes that already exist? Now, this will either return an empty array if they can't find anything, or it will return that whole object, both the post ID and the number of likes. So I can simply come in here and just check to make sure that this exists and it has a length of greater than zero. So in other words, is there something in that array? If so, then I'll just take the likes and I'll take the first one because there only should be one. And I just want to pick off the number of likes. Otherwise, we'll pass in zero as the default. Now, what this means is now this is going to be defaulting to whatever we have in the database already. Now, currently, the only page that has anything in the database is this first post because this is part of my seed data. You can create this seed database that just inserts values as kind of starting points in development. So here I, I go ahead and update this here. And when I refresh, you'll see it actually stays. And the reason is because this is coming from the database. So now if I refresh the page, all of this stays there. Now, the beauty of this is if you're already using use action state inside of a React application, you can basically drag and drop this, add those two little helpers from Astro and keep your same functionality. You get all the power of React, you get all the benefit with Astro's DB, server-side rendering that you might need, all this baked into an Astro application that's lightning quick because by default, it ships no client-side JavaScript. If you're already using Astro and you've been using React, hopefully this gives you one more tool to connect the two together. Before I go, I do want to mention just one thing, and that is that today's the last day for my fundraiser for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. And the best part is, if you give, I can pretty much guarantee you're going to win one of these cool prizes. I've got things from Vercel and Warp and Mux and Neon and Cloud Cannon and Git Tower, all these and more. Now, I only have about 15 people have sent me their receipts. You just have to give by tonight and send me your receipt and I'll make sure that you get added to the drawing that I'll do this Friday. And right now, at least I can pretty much guarantee you're going to win one of these items. Give at least $5, send me your receipt and you can help cure childhood cancer and win some cool dev prizes. A huge thanks to all these companies for partnering again with me this year. I know it's been a harder year for a lot of people to give just kind of worldwide with everything going on. So I appreciate it if you can give a few bucks to help cure childhood cancer. It's great to use the channel in this kind of way. Okay, well, thanks again for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.